Good morning from Wisconsin. It is 32 degrees and very slippery. I'm gonna try not to fall down. And we're gonna see if the lawnmowers I put away four months ago will start. And if so, how many cranking amps it takes to get them started. In a previous video, I questioned if 140 amps from our five-year-old battery was enough to start an engine at freezing temperatures. Measured with a DC amp clamp, that engine and starter required a peak of 127 amps at 70 degrees, pulling the battery down to 9 volts, which is as low as acceptable. The first mower I'm testing today is your average 20-year-old John Deere consumer ride product with a not-so-average fuel-injected Kohler Command Pro engine that I installed 10 years ago. The gas is over a year old, and I'm not sure which president held office when the oil was last changed, so this is a great example of an abused engine that is no spring chicken. The battery is newish, not quite two years old, but it's also rated for only 150 cold cranking amps. It sounds pretty terrible, with an obvious misfire, lifter noise, and maybe an exhaust leak, but it did start without much drama. Let's go back and take a look at peak starting amps. The starter stalled when initially engaged, and we can see a massive 297 amp peak with the battery begging for mercy at just over 4 volts. This certainly is not normal, but these aren't optimal conditions with components in tip-top shape either. Once the starter gets past the stall and top dead center, amperage drops to less than 100, with around 8 volts at the battery. Before the engine warmed up, I performed a second start, this time with better results at a peak of 123 amps and battery voltage dipping to 10.4. When the engine is running, the amps displayed is the charging system recharging the battery, with amps slowly decreasing as battery voltage increases. This is the regulating function of the rectifier regulator, which is kind of neat to see and shows one of the more useful functions of a DC amp clamp. If you're curious, the misfire and lifter noise did sort itself out after a few minutes. For old fuel and freezing temperatures, I think it sounds pretty good. Next up is my Husqvarna MZ5225 with a Kohler Courage Twin. I ran this one dry before storing it, so it may take a bit of cranking to get it started. On the third start attempt, amps momentarily peak at 203, with battery voltage dipping to just below 10 volts. If the battery was weak or low on amperage, I suspect this is where it would cause problems, with starter stall being the likely result. Twin cylinder Kohler engines with electric start only have no automatic compression release mechanism. This means increased load on the starter, especially when rolling through the initial compression stroke during a cold start. Any weakness from the battery or increased resistance from cable or connection problems will increase the likelihood of starter stall. Once past the initial compression stroke, cranking amps hover around 120 with battery volts holding at 10 or more. I think these are good numbers, especially considering the freezing temperatures and extended cranking. When the engine starts, the charging system kicks in and the rectifier regulator peaks output at a measured 14 amps perfectly normal for this 15 amp charging system. The Kohler service manual recommends 400 cold cranking amps for starting in all conditions, and our test today proved that to be true. This means the 200 cold cranking amp minimum is likely to be insufficient under certain conditions, especially for twin cylinder commercial engines. This leads me to believe our five year old battery at 140 amps wouldn't do so well in the cold, likely resulting in starter stall or at least labored cranking. If you learned something from this video, please hit the like button and subscribe. Thanks for watching.